Well, everything's green here in much of Oklahoma. And Daryl, the last time we talked to you, it's been a couple of weeks. The situation really wasn't, you know, green. So how have things changed with pasture conditions? We have had a lot of rain through much of Oklahoma, even extending into western Oklahoma, which were the driest areas. And they were they continue to be dry, but not nearly as bad as before. So we are getting uh, some very timely rains that are giving us a lot of green up in our pasture conditions at this point in time. So yeah, we were taught last time we were talking, we were like, yeah, we just we really need that, those really timely rains. So how has that impacted cattle markets? Well, you know, as far as feeder cattle markets, they had dropped pretty sharply from an early April high uh, up until about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, but we have seen those markets bounce back, and I think that is due in part to probably some better pasture conditions. Uh, so we're seeing some improvement in those feeder cattle markets. So how about cold cow markets? Cold cow markets have been quite volatile uh, the last few weeks. They've been very strong in general all year. We've had a very strong uh, lean beef market behind it. That's what drives that market. Uh, but obviously the level of cow slaughter and pasture conditions plays into it as well. And we did see again in the last week or so uh, a, a jump up in those cull cow prices. And I think that's probably in part due to these improved pasture conditions. So looking at the mesonet, the drought situation in Oklahoma, it's starting to kind of disappear a little bit. There's still some areas um, in the state that are still suffering from drought, but how's the rest of the country um, handling drought right now? You know, we still have very widespread drought conditions around the U.S., even though we've seen some marginal improvement in places like Oklahoma and a few other places, other areas are actually continuing to get worse. And so uh, on, on balance, uh, pasture and range conditions across the U.S. right now are actually in, uh, still in the worst shape that they've ever been at this time of the year, even though they have improved a little bit over the last uh, three or four weeks. So we've got a lot of drought with a lot of implications for cattle markets as we continue on from here. So what are those implications for U.S. cow herds? Well, you know, we've already seen beef cow slaughter up 15% year over year for the first five months of this year. So no matter what happens, we're gonna see significant cow herd liquidation. And, and there's no indication right now that those slaughter rates are gonna drop back significantly in the, in, certainly not in the next few weeks. So, uh, so the bottom line is we're gonna see probably a record level of cow culling this year. Uh, I think it'll be 13% or higher, uh, which would be an all time record level. And that's liable to lead to a three to 4% decrease in the beef cow herd. Uh, we could see the beef cow herd drop by a million head or more uh, in 2022. Well, you know, it's we're just a couple days away from the first day of summer. We're moving in really into the grilling season if it hasn't already started up. You know what? You know how's all this going to impact beef prices? Well, you know we're really watching the demand side still. Uh, you know Memorial Day we we're kind of getting indication, but it actually looks like beef. Uh, you know beef markets, wholesale beef uh, markets are actually uh, coming back a little bit here. So I think the demand side of this thing is still pretty firm. It's just going to depend on these, uh, you know, these pasture conditions and what producers are, have to do relative to the drought, relative to maybe what the market conditions are beyond that. All right, thanks, Daryl. Dr. Daryl Peel, Livestock Marketing Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.